Today, we enter a new era, an era of prosperity, success, and tranquility. We now have all of our vampires and potential non-vampires accrued and collected. We have a large amount of slaves at the moment with Hops and Thorgan and Balzana being the main three carrying the squad. We have Lax, our first ogre slash Jotun slave with another one on the go. Things are looking really good around the town. After last episode's bombardment of raids, we can now hopefully have just some peace, some relaxation, and some time to progress. The plan today is to actually do research and things. Now we have Dutch and Jezebel here, we can probably get on with that quite quickly. Uh, and, I, I, and again, <laughs> for like the seventh time, I'd like to actually do some crafting. And hopefully now that we have two columns capable of research, we can get onto that quickly. If you enjoy any of today's episode, consider liking, subscribing, and make sure you tell your mama. And before we start, I do need to make a quick announcement. I am now streaming on YouTube twice a week, uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. GMT. Come along, say hey. We play Project Zomboid, Apex Legends, Rimworld, the whole shkabang. Hopefully I'll see you there. Let's get into things and let's get started with research. And I think we have finally worked out what Jezebel's calling is for her specialization. I've been saving this for a special occasion, for a reason that Jezebel needs it. And honestly, I think it's just going to be intellectual. She hasn't come out as to be anything else particularly important. She's not a very good cook. Animal handling, redundant crafting, redundant healing, potentially. Social? Potentially. But intellectuals where she's really, really stood out. So we're going to go for uh, researching so we can just get her research speed up. And I think that suits her really nicely. We also have a quest that will be expiring in two hours. Thecla's Damage Shuffle. Now, I wasn't originally going to take this quest till I read that it was the tribes people from the Ogre tribes that are going to be attacking. And you know what? It's the Ogre tribes. We've got to get rid of them. They need to be extinct by the end of this series. So you know what? I am going to accept it. For a small golden chest and some shuttle loot, that will do me lovely. And the shuttle has crashed nearby and very conveniently has crashed right in the middle of our base. We'll get that deconstructed and we'll get these people protected. Easy peasy. And Jezebel has gained another level in her magical achievement. I haven't really looked at Jezebel very much, but you know what? She's going very, very nicely with her telekinetic. Now, I had a very inspired comment last episode where the inspiration was that what we did, we turned Jezebel into a Chronomancer. Now, one of the abilities that with all, within the Necromancer Chronomancer skill is that you age somebody up whilst also then making yourself younger. One of the plans for this series was to originally give Jezebel the ability to have children. We were going to have vampire babies and it's going to be very nice. But Jezebel spawned with 0% fertility for whatever reason. So what we could do, hear me out, is we can make Jezebel a chronomancer to then get the ability for her to then make herself younger so she could have children. Long term goal, yes, but a very interesting one. I think at the moment we are just going to stick with telekinetic and get that to be finished. Um, and we're going to be leveling up her actual magical abilities for the time being until she can actually use her abilities without any issues. And a raid from the Ogre tribes, they've arrived nearby and they're looking to attack the Imperials. How many is there? Two. <laughs> Search and destroy. Easy peasy. Sniff and nostril decided to go through my walls. Sniff and nostril. Perfect names. Perfect. Good job, guys. Proud of you. <laughs> Lord Timer is the first to get involved here and just it wipe them out. Absolute obliteration. Lord Timer is taking them out left, right, and center. Ignore the fact that Jezebel is also using her telekinesis. To Lord Timer, how did you get on there? Very easily. Very well. Good job, guys. I've also noticed that we have some dice of chaos just sitting here that I never rolled as well. Let's get it rolled. What are we going to get? A caravan animal have wandered in. A group of Amaro. Ooh. Ooh. Hello. They have cool things on their backs. Your shuttle has arrived to take home the Imperials. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. And there's our lovely Yak. Put it down. Thank you. <laughs> there is our lovely golden chest. Crack it open and see what we get. Some emeralds was that? An arcane shard. Very nice. Uh, so this basically just gives somebody a free level of, of arcane ability. Let's give that to Jezebel. Perfect. Another level for Jezebel. Perfect. So what we're going to do just to go for the upgrade again. Enslaved. Firebane has been enslaved. Welcome, Firebane. If I remember rightly, you aren't very good at all. 
<laughs> as a high mate, he's only good at social and intellectual, and as a slave, he's not very good. Uh, he's going to be one of the ones that we are going to be sending off to the outpost, but from what I remember, we actually have a couple more slaves that are nearly ready to be sent off. So I'm just going to put Fire Bane on cleaning, just whilst we still have him. Another enslavement, Rod, has been enslaved as well. Rod, uh, he's only good at animal handling, and that is it. <laughs> uh, but he is a herder, which is very interesting, but he's just not good enough for us either. Another colonist that will be sent to the outposts. Oh, and Trenanone has actually gotten up from his catatonic state. Now, Trenanone's very interesting. <laughs> uh, Trenanone last episode was catatonic. He became depressive and it looks like th looked like things were in a pretty bad spot for him. I think Trenanone, as lovely as you could potentially be with your stats, um, he's got extremely good traits apart from depressive, obviously. I think we're going to convert him into a blood bag. Uh, we lost one blood bag a couple episodes ago, so we may as well try go for another one. We've also now decided to queue up a small tailoring workshop. I feel like the tailoring workshop would not be in the same area as the smithing and crafting area. So I've used this space up here to build a kind of like work long workshoppy area next to the school, which is still empty, funnily enough. Our education system within this town is pretty lax. <laughs> One could compare this education system to another country. The United States of America is the country I'm thinking of. Congratulations. And our anima tree now has 20 grass around it. And you know what that means? We get a free linking ritual. Or we can talk to the tree. Uh, <laughs> hmm. Let's do the linking ritual. There we are. Lord Timer has connected to the tree. It means nothing for him, obviously, because he is already psychic. So it's just a free level for him lovely uh, so as a primal we could either now go for static blow or skewering assault let's go for skewering assault because then that'll mean we can either have severance or ko i think the time has come in the tavern and it's a special special occasion that we need to commemorate do we go for square tables <laughs> or circle tables the big questions that must be answered I think what we're going to do is to settle the wars of all wars and we're going to alternate between square and circle tables. I'm calling it here right now on King All Hobos at YouTube.com. The, the, the battle of square tables to circle tables is over. We're going to have an equal split. Don't even bring me started on triangle tables or octagon tables or even hexagon tables, all right? We're going to keep it nice and simple. Artificial limbs are complete. Next, let's grab ourselves. Woodfire Crematorium, Bold Mob Creation of High Elf Equipment. Uh, I think we're going to go for the High Elf Equipment just so we have got some better armor that we can craft. And a lot of this is very cool looking. Oh no, we have an issue. Lord Tyma's Scarification has healed. Cause Scarless. Are vampires Scarless? They are. You know what? That's okay. I think within the law, we can say that the pre-termined vampires that we scarify are then cured of their scars as a result of becoming a vampire that's i think i think that's i think that's right you know what i like that i like that a lot in fact lord tomo with another level he's literally just standing here being scared of fire and he's become even better at magic perfect so we can either go for ko which imbues the cast's melee weapon with an overcharged pulse of primal energy that on contact will knock a target unconscious. Which would be really nice for capturing more and more slaves, especially if they're running away. Or we have Severance, which charges the weapon with primal energy and the caster slips into the shadows, then appears next to the target and striking at their legs and destroying them. Sometimes fatal, but not always. I think we're going to go for KO because that's just way too good for collecting slaves. And that sounds fantastic if you ask me. Trait, optimist, nice. Barzana's long happiness has convinced them that life is pretty good. Another call, another slave that's become an optimist. It seems like we're treating our slaves too nicely. We initially gave them really nice armor and all the weapons they wanted. And then we removed it. And now they're just naked all the time. And they're still happy. We are fantastic overlords. I've now also added in Firebane and Rod into the Bring. Bryn Kroger Beach. It's a very long way from a beach, but you know what? I'll allow it. See the outpost here and a raid from the House Hesse. Uh, Lackey are 
Oh my gosh. Lackey is back. Lackey was one of our slaves. And they're looking to capture Lord Tony due to poaching. Interesting. Now, Lackey, where are you? There he is. You were one of our slaves at one point. I can see why. You were pretty good. Obviously, these guys aren't actually that powerful, really. Uh, in comparison to our people, this should be an absolute breeze. I'm going to get that my, my subjects from the house, Hessa, are fleeing. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Just this last little group down here with Smelly. I mean, Smelly's got this realistically. This is too easy for him. And the rest of them are fleeing as well. Smelly chasing down the last one with blood in her eyes. God, brutal. And we do have a lot of survivors. I guess I'm going to capture who I can and go from there. Unfortunately, none of the people from that last raid were particularly any good. So I have just not captured any of them. I don't think we need them at the moment. Everything's going pretty well as it is. And enslaved. Fist has been enslaved. Fist, were you any good? Uh, Cookie 9, healing for intellectual 15. A character that definitely on the base, uh, base stats is extremely good. But I don't need another cook and I don't need another medic. What I need is somebody that's good at intellectual. Um, as a slave, you cannot do that. So unfortunately, you will be sent to the outpost when we're ready. And a raid from the Union of Raleigh. These people are normally just peaceful, but they are looking to capture Lord Tyra due to poaching. Ah, ah, you have a quest for me, even though you're hostile. Interesting. Well, <laughs> this is a Lord Tyra job here. Everyone's just going to go search and destroy. Dutch is the first one here to lead the charge. Uh, Dutch, are you okay? Yeah, Dutch is fine. They're already fleeing as well. I mean, I'd flee as well if Lord Tyra just came flying at me and have just Devil Jesus Christ. And high elf equipment is complete. Next, we've got mechanical limbs. Haven't we just done mechanical limbs? Oh well. Dark elf equipment or obelisks. Let's re-roll. And we're going to go through the textile spinning. Huge. Probably the biggest research we've had apart from engineering this series. You'd have no idea how much I can actually achieve. Now we have cloth. All the research stuff for making armors has been probably unlocked because we haven't been able to make pretty much any armors so far this series because we just didn't have any cloth. And a raid from House Hesse as well. Only one raid. Oh, only one raider. That means you're attacking my slaves. Now, this isn't nearly as bad as it was because we actually now have four slaves here. Very impressive. I reckon that they could all just go melee attack. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> Smelly is pregnant. Smelly is pregnant. Smelly is pregnant. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> oh no. Can I look at the baby's jeans yet? No, I cannot look at the baby's jeans yet. Good. You know what? That's good. So we now have our vampire ogre and our praying mantis crossed vampire having a baby. Oh no. <laughs> ah, congratulations, Smelly and Lord Tiber. You're going to make brilliant parents. The outpost battle was won as well. Perfect. And a man hunting pack. Now, last man hunting pack was a pack of fairies and it caused us to have 14 days of raids. This time. Uh, no! No, no, no. Another man hunting pack of fairies have entered the area. The issue is, this is, a, this is probably the worst raid we could get. If I attack just one of these fairies and kill them, I will have another warrant put on me. But actually, do warrants stack? <laughs> um, I think there's an, a bug where because these are probably classed as endangered animals immediately every other faction will po put you down for a warrant for poaching because they are endangered animals so i forget lord tome and smelly to be the only ones that take them out and hope that warrens don't stack we should be okay smelly time is straight involved killing off all the fairies this is an easy one for them really absolutely no issues whatsoever and obviously we have not collected any more warrants as a result so i think we can confirm that warrants do not stack we cannot have any more warrants put onto us. Fantastic. 
and Lord Tyrema can now gain an expertise. So we can either go for melee, mining, we, but we basically we can go for melee and that's it. So we can go for dueling for melee cooldown factor, or we can go for armor penetration factor. I think we're going to go for dueling uh, just because he can already use his fist as well as the weapon, which does even more damage. And if we can get him to do more damage per second by reducing the cooldown even further, I think that will really maximize his potential. And a raid from the Ogre Shrubs. Our sworn enemies have arrived and they're looking to capture Lord Time for poaching. Everybody seems to want to capture Lord Time. They don't mention Smelly, it's always Lord Time. But there's four of them and they are here. Easy peasy, you know, I don't even need to worry, honestly, I don't think. I, my people can just take this out, search and destroy. We've got to a point now where all of our combat colonists are just too good, you know? They're just way too good. And Lord Tomo has gotten straight involved here. I've, I've got full faith in him. You know, three, ogre, uh, three ogres, easy peasy for him. And the tribes people are now fleeing as well, just as we re research tech star spinning. And next we've got beekeeping, windmills, or an arcane lighting. None of those are what we were after. Let's go for a reroll. Basic furniture, carpet making or plumbing. I think it's very obvious, basic furniture. There it is, the raid has been dealt with, with a survivor at their feet. Lag Yag. Uh, 11 in melee double passion, 10 in mining double passion. Uh, very nice, very nice. We'll make a very fine addition to our ogre army. Oh, Smelly's just killed them. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Ah! <laughs> Whoops. And basic furniture is complete. Next, we've got the trebuchet, beacons, stews. Let's reroll. Legionary army or military pole arms. I think that we are going to go for military pole arms, I think. And I think on that lovely note of locking all my vampires in one room to force them to do research, we're going to call it here. This episode has been fantastic for the progression within the series. We've got a tailoring room on the go. We've got more slaves on the go. Our prison is nearly, quote unquote, empty. <laughs> Thorgan and Mianio are from the split ideology that happened at the end of last episode, and we are still on our way to nearly converting them. Nielsen and Harris are the last colonists in here that need to be recruited, with Harris just needing to be enslaved. Our actual colony economy, that's very hard to say, <laughs> is going extremely well as well. We are still producing a load of these crossbows here to try and get a really good quality one. And look, we just have loads of stuff. It's an absolute mess, and I am trying to get that sorted as we speak. So things are starting to slow down a little bit within the colony. We're just looking to get these last sort of good big additions for us to work towards so we can then hopefully do something else more exciting. So if you have enjoyed today's episode, are excited to see how this preparation for the Ogre War is going, consider liking, subscribing, and make sure you tell your mum about it. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.